Hello, my friends. We are back again looking at another legendary animation channel. We have been through the odd ones out, Jaden animations, Haminations. But homies, we are not done yet. We are not done yet. Let me explain a studio. What? The creative brain drippings of animator and all around dork, Rebecca Parham. Parhamination. Well, Rebecca, it seems as though you have some classics and I've been getting requests to look at them. And so we are going to go through Let Me Explain Studios and we are going to check out some of the essentials starting with the most viewed video my school dress codes 38 million views see as a male i never really had to deal with dress code violations i feel like girls in school are treated way worse than guys in terms of dress code violations now rebecca she's a female so she probably has a lot to say about this topic anyways i'm ready are you ready i'm so excited let's get into this people robert eddie k let me explain studios. Three, two, one. Here's a tip for all of you in middle school and high school right now. You Not know that me. anxious feeling that you get all the time that everyone is watching you and secretly judging and scrutinizing every little thing about you? Like if you walk by the cool kids and they start laughing and you automatically assume Aww. that they're laughing at you because you just couldn't get your hair to behave that morning? Yeah, that has a name in psychology. It's called the imaginary audience. It's subconsciously believing every mistake you make and every imperfection about your appearance is seen and judged by everyone. Right. Well, I've got some consolation for you. You ain't alone. Sweet. I was literally talking about this in I don't know what video it was. I think it might have been the J it, it must have been the Jaden animations. I don't know. But I was talking about how when you go to the gym, people who haven't been to the gym before, they think that when they go to the gym, suddenly every human in the premises is going to stare at them and judge them. But if you have these feelings, don't worry because everybody in that gym is way too focused on themselves and how people think of them. You don't gotta worry, homies. Most everyone in your school is dealing with those thoughts. And that anxiety from person to person is gonna be expressed in a plethora of different ways, including negative ways like bullying. Free your mind, man. The imaginary audience isn't real. The world is not what it seems. Wake up, the Matrix has you. So one wow. of the hard facts about school and about life in general is dress codes. Yeah, it doesn't stop after high school explainers. People are always telling you what to wear. In jobs, True. in restaurants, passing by on the street. I wouldn't be wearing shorts if I had your legs, sweetie. Yikes, oh my gosh, could you imagine? All these legs, all the better to kick you with! Yeah, I guess dress codes never stop. Literally, the only job where I haven't had a dress code is this. I make up the dress code. How sick is that? That's why I wear so much stupid stuff on my channel. Because y'all know if Robert IDK is going to a business meeting, he can't be looking like this. He can't be looking like this. In fact, the way I'm dressed right now is literally like the only thing I wear that would be acceptable for another job. So that's kind of ironic. I wouldn't be wearing shorts if I had your legs, sweetie. Oh yeah? Well, your judgment of others is a manifestation of your crippling disappointment in how your life is turning out. Oh! Sweetie. Okay, nerd. <laughs> when I was but a middle schooler, I went to a private preparatory school that made us wear uniforms. I don't know why I said that in a British accent. They cared very much what color your socks were, and if your skirt was below the knees. One inch too high, and that would be anarchy, I tell you! That's something that I remember the girls at that school complained a lot about, is that their skirts were just too long. They're so long I can't think straight! Free the knee! <laughs> Look, I'm all for personal expression, but that school didn't let us wear leggings in the winter under our skirts Ooh. unless it was below freezing. So if you want even less protection from the elements, then go right ahead. I'll be over here in the thermal tent that I wear around my waist. Dude, you can store so much power in that. If you have your own thermal tent, walking around with a thermal tent, aside from having a much harder time kicking people in the face, the tent's kind of cool. I'm not going to say that uniforms are an inherently bad thing. Some people like not having to think about what they wear in the morning. But True. I am not one of those people. I mean, I can't even decide on one outfit to stick my animated self with. Just look at this <laughs> Ew. Eat your heart out, Minnie Mouse. So you can be sure that I was happy to be rid of that school uniform when I started public high school. I didn't have many non-uniform outfits, so my mom and I went out and bought me a brand new wardrobe for school. And for my freshman year, there wasn't anything too special about this school's dress code. Just the usual fare, the stuff you'd expect. No mini skirts or midriffs, no pants so long that you trip over them, no multicolored hair that looks like you took a highlighter to your head. <sighs> it all felt very reasonable, especially... 
What else we got here? Low rider pants, excessive pockets. Bro, let the homie keep their pockets in peace. Homie's gotta keep his Animal Crossing island online at all times. Listen, okay, I have two DS's in each pocket what here. You know that this plays DS games, right? Well, yeah, but I got Animal Crossing going here, and I don't want to stop doing Animal Crossing. I got that. You think you can do that without excessive pockets? No one! Stay yeah. off the set. It all felt very reasonable, especially having just left a school that gave you detention if your shoelaces weren't the same color as your shoe. But Bruh. the next year... Jeez, I don't even know what happened. Someone at that school must have royally screwed up because suddenly the staff decided that they needed to ban all clothing with pictures and words on it. Oh got my Got a cute gosh. picture of a turtle on your shirt? Banned! Your pants got the name of the designer on it? Banned! Got a sweater with musical instruments on it? Banned! Banned. And it's against the dress code too. This was a huge deal at my school. Every kid was outraged. I don't know if it's the same nowadays, but back in my high school, graphic tees were the majority of everyone's wardrobe. True, Heck, true. I had just bought a whole new wardrobe the previous year, and now you're telling me I gotta go out and buy another one entirely? Yeah, what did that person do? Did you not find out why it got banned? You know what I think the shirt must have said? The only way that this could have happened, and for them to be so offended by someone's shirt that they would change the whole dress code, I think... His shirt said, don't subscribe to Robert IDK. Oh my God! I know, oh. I know, it's horrible. It's horrible, I, I, it's hard to even think about. And that is the only bannable offense. <laughs> that was just a clever segue into reminding you guys, if you could boop the like button and potentially the subscribe button, if you're watching this video and for some reason you're not subscribed to the channel, it would be so cool to have you back here next time. That would be really cool. This is the only time I'm gonna say it. It's the only time I'm gonna say it. If you could help us out, that would be so... Cool. Okay, back to the video. The only exceptions to the rule were school shirts, like from clubs and sports teams, <sighs> college shirts, or patterns. So basically, if you had one graphic on the front of your shirt, that's a big old no-no. Nope. But if the graphic was all over, that's perfectly Why fine. Why did? Mm, yes, makes sense. Good call, staff. All this meant was I wore a lot of black theater club shirts, to the point where people were mistaking me for being goth. But there was one shirt I had that was my personal rebellion against the tyranny. On a trip to Disney World, I had found a Grumpy shirt that legitimately looked like a college debate team shirt. Grumpy state debate team. Huh? We're right, you're wrong, debate over. My, my, Disney merchandise designers, aren't you a talented bunch? Thanks for aiding the rebellion. That shirt looks so much like a real college shirt that I wore to school dozens of wow. times, and not once did a teacher or staff member decide to look a little bit closer at it. I'm so bad. That is so tough. That is so cool. Be careful admitting this online. You, do you know how much time you could do for that? <laughs> Wait, ser serious? Yeah. Do you know how much time we can do for this? Yo, Rebecca, you know how much time you can do for that? <laughs> they find out. They find out what you did. Horrible. That wasn't the only time that I bent the dress code rules. When it came to backpacks, we had to have mesh or clear plastic so the adults could see what we were carrying. Wow. We gotta make sure no one's bringing any questionable items into school like Game Boys. Oh. But for some reason, girls were still allowed to carry purses because I could never fit my Game Boy in here. So what ended up happening is a lot of girls tried to work around the system with messenger bags. Right. If they got caught, they could argue that it was oh a my big gosh. purse. Sometimes they got away with it and sometimes they didn't. Here's the problem with these dumb rules is there's there's so much room to bend them. This is such nonsense. This is so goofy. My school never had these rules and it was fine. Life was fine. It it worked. No one's backpack turned into a bear and started eating everyone. It was pretty safe. Pretty safe. I was one of these messenger bag rule benders. I had followed the backpack rule for two years, but by junior year, my clear plastic backpack had broken. These oh. things suck, by the way. And I had found a denim messenger yeah, bag that horrible. I really, really liked and wanted to show off at school, so sue me. Now here is where having the reputation of the good kid comes in handy. Because the vice principal herself would stand at the busiest hallway between periods and nab oh any kid in violation of the dress code. Oh my and every gosh. day, I would walk past her in that hallway with my messenger bag completely in view, and she would turn a blind eye. Oh hey, my Hey, that gosh. shirt is prohibited. Go to the office. You, take out that nose ring. You know they're not allowed. Oh, hello, Rebecca. You have a good day, sweetheart. Hey, I see that logo on your pants, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel like everyone, maybe everyone who's gone to multiple schools, because I guess there are some schools where you can luck out, but I've been to a lot of schools. I went to probably like four or five different schools, and you always know that vice principal who just acts like a demon and just, you stop doing the thing. No smiling, no happy.
happiness. And it's like, bro, do you really want everyone to like dread your presence? <laughs> it's so much more fun to make friends. And I know, I know she's there to do a job. She's not there to make friends, but still happy students means better grades. Maybe. I don't know if that's true. Eh, it pays to be the good kid. I say as I just finished listing off times I broke the rules. <gasps> College is better. College is pretty chill. I don't even know what the dress code was at my animation school. We all just wore hoodies because the computer labs were freezing. Wow. Well, we did have these little things called full faculty critiques where you presented your progress to a room full of ex-Pixar, DreamWorks, and Disney artists. So wow. yeah, you were gently encouraged to clean up for those. Maybe wear the good sweatpants. <laughs> these days, I am lucky because I could wear whatever I want for this job. I could be wearing something outrageous and embarrassing right this second and you would never know. <laughs> Score one for the animators. Take that, vloggers. You and your daily uploads. <laughs> oh, oh. F's in the chat for the animators who can't upload often because their stuff takes so much work. You know what? For that, for that, Rebecca, we gonna subscribe and boop that like button. You deserve it. All right. Very good. I have not thought about school dress codes in, well, 10 years. Or actually, even before then, I didn't think about them because I never was bad enough to get banned. They didn't mind my Fallout Boy t-shirts at school. But hey, I feel like we have to get to know Let Me Explain Studios a little bit better. Backyard stories. This is what I'm talking about. I love these videos where it's just like, here's a bunch of stories that relate to a particular topic. I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. So let's hit it. Backyard stories. Three, two, one. Ah, the backyard. The personal wonderland of suburban kids everywhere. A place of curiosity and imagination. A minefield of anthills and lost Hot Wheels. Okay. A peaceful refuge where the greatest childhood memories are made. Okay. Jesus! Girls! She did it! That was startling. I was trying to reminisce about backyards and you do that to me and all my viewers. It's okay, uh, continue. Hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my That's little oodle lollies, Rebecca Parham here. Backyards are great. They have grass and trees and fences. To Sometimes. a kid, they could be the plains of Africa, the jungles of Papua New Guinea, the great wilderness of Alaska, or the perfect place for a tree house. Can I just go on record to say that I freaking love tree houses? I mean, look at these. They're wow. mystical and woodsy, wow. and full of character. Incredible. They're away from people. Look at this one. I want to live there. I want to hook it up with Wi-Fi and a sauna. I want all the local kids to call me the Witch of the Woods and tell stories about how I'll steal your toes if you get too close to my house. All I'm thinking is hopping off with the paraglider. This looks like some Breath of the Wild over here. I think I defeated a mythical beast off of this thing. I want to be a ghost story. Wait, we're off topic. Backyards, a staple of suburban living. I lived in suburbia as a kid with all the trimmings, neighborhood kids to play with, nearby woods to explore, a okay, school I could okay. walk to and from. And you can't forget your standard issue bully that lives up the street. My oh, bully yikes. kid was named J... Hey, yeah, Jocko. Oh, Jocko. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I was I was scared there. I wasn't ready to pick sides. Rebecca, I would not have allowed you to make me pick sides. Jocko. Now, Jocko wasn't your run-of-the-mill bully kid. You know, the big thundering monsters that you stay away from at all costs, like a canker sister or a flats the flounder. No, no, no. Jocko was more like Buford from Phineas and Ferb. Still okay. a bully, but one that got involved in the adventures okay. and you invited over for a game of baseball sometimes. He was a weird one for sure. One time we were over at his house in his backyard and he needed to uh, release the hounds. But okay. instead of going inside and doing his business like a normal person, oh, no. he no. popped a squat right there in the grass and made fertilizer. And then his dog ate it. He also once oh, found my a lighter gosh. in our backyard and decided that he wanted to make a campfire. And my sister and I were just like, yeah, sure, sounds fun. Makes At sense. At some point during our tomfoolery oh, of no. gathering things to incinerate in our campfire, Jocko wanted to act all tough, so he pointed the lighter at me and my sister and lit it. Just so happens, at that moment, my mom looked up from doing the dishes and saw that through the kitchen window. Yikes. And she Get away from my kids! Out. Unsurprisingly, Jocko had to go home. Get away from my daughters! Yeah, that's not something you want a parent to look outside and see. Doing some dishes at home, look outside, and a young boy is pointing the 
the power of fire at your daughters? If I'm the dad, I like, I step outside, throw the flamethrower in the air. Hey, Jocko, you get the message? Get away from my girls. Glad she caught us too, because we weren't even messing around at that point. We were gonna light a freaking pyre. Actually, my dad did call me a firebug sometimes when I was a kid because I tended to like fire and still kind of do. Cool. Hey, it's warm and pretty and gets rid of evidence. Everything you want in a boyfriend. But the big story that I remember about Jocko was the tree incident. One day, my sister and I were playing baseball with Jocko in our backyard when one of us hit the ball over the fence into the oh, neighbor's yard. No, the our worst. neighbor wasn't home and the their backyard worst. gate was locked, so Jocko came up with a bright idea. He began climbing our giant oak tree so he could swing over to the neighbor's tree, climb down- And, and how are you getting back? And Rachel and I just stood there watching him climb, periodically going, You're gonna fall! We're gonna have to call the fire department to get you down! Oh good, that's Which good, I think uh, only motivation. his resolve to make his brilliant plan work because he just kept climbing. Now strap in for this one, explainers, it gets good. When he got close to the neighbor's tree and was about 15 feet off the ground, he grabbed a pencil-thin oh branch in gosh. his hands and actually tried to swing to the neighbor's tree like he was freaking Tarzan! <laughs> Apparently, Jocko has never seen a wily e. Coyote cartoon because oh, then no. he would have known better. Who says cartoons rot your brain? Guess what? The branch snapped! <laughs> Get out had of not there. only fallen, no, 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 he had crashed through the neighbor's wet oh, bar, no. which my sources tell me is a bar or counter equipped with running water and a sink for serving alcohol. How Everybody hard did he hit it? it? Hmm. And Jocko had completely obliterated this thing. It was like a dinosaur had stepped on it, just went <laughs> pfft. Jocko was screaming oh so gosh. loud that his dad, who was working in their front yard up the street, Heard it, came running, and kicked in the neighbor's gate uh -huh. to get to him. Uh -huh. He ended up having a broken arm, which I'm still surprised to this day that that's all that happened. From the damage that I saw to this wet bar, I'm surprised he's not dead. <laughs> there should have been some fractured ribs or brain damage or something. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs. And every afternoon I break my arms. I just wanted to point out the wonderful, wonderful Spongebob reference. Some of these animators have been sneaking in like little Spongebob, like old school Spongebob references, and it just makes my heart feel whole, you know? Also, when I would hit a ball into the neighbor's backyard, I was too introverted and shy to go over and do anything about it. I was not going over to get it. I was like, okay, I guess I, we don't have this ball now. Hit me in there forever! We don't have this ball. Even if like the neighbors like cars were not in the driveway, so like it, they weren't even there. I don't like getting into people's business, especially as a child. It seems like he was a bit of a dingus, but kudos to Jocko for at least trying. Well, I guess if you're meant to hang, you won't drown. He also had to pay the neighbor back for the wet bar, just to yeah. add insult to injury. Rolling on with the theme of breaking things, my sister and I actually did the childhood cliche of breaking a window with a baseball. You thought that opening Classic. skit was just a witty farce, huh? No, actually happened. My sister and I were in the backyard playing baseball with the neighborhood kids. Big surprise there. I was pitching, she was batting, I tossed her the ball, she hit it, it veered off to the right, and crashed <sighs> right through my parents' bedroom window. And everyone in that backyard, except Rachel, Hit the deck. Yo, is it just me or are baseballs and baseball bats like the most dangerous things that kids are allowed to play with and we act like it's normal? Baseball bats. You know how much damage a baseball bat can do? And just the ball. The ball's breaking windows. Every other child outside toy is like undense plastic. Unless your kid wants to play baseball, then you turn up the danger level, you multiply it by about 10. My parents came racing out Side and found my sister standing there with bat in hand, completely flustered. Both of my parents were mad, but my mom told Rachel to go get her piggy bank because she was gonna pay for it. Cough it the up. Dad jumped in and said, Hey, that's not fair. It was an accident. Every kid gets to break one window with a baseball. Yeah, that okay. was my dad for you. That's nice. He never forgot what it was like to be a kid, so he wanted the most fulfilling childhood for us, including all of the classic mistakes like breaking a window with a baseball. Aww. So now I gotta tell one on me, about time I suppose. When I was about nine and should have known better, I would sometimes pass the time in the backyard by taking an old fence post, laying it over the side of our raised garden beds, and jumping on the end of it, launching an array of different materials into the air. Okay. Rocks, pebbles, grass, sticks, Baseballs. anything. This is what we did before we had the internet, kids. 
One day, I really wanted to launch a ball off of my makeshift catapult, but there was a problem. The ball would roll off of the fence post before I could launch it. Physics. Who knew? Yeah, and true. in order to complete my little experiment, I needed an assistant. Oh, uh, no. David! My little He's going to get a plank to the face. The time and was very susceptible to suggestion, which worked out perfectly for me, not so perfectly for him. I told him on oh, the count no. of three, he was going to put the ball on no. the fence post. He's so getting I a plank to the face. The other end before it rolled off. Simple enough, wouldn't you say? But when I counted to three to commence our experiment, he did something... A little huh? unforeseen. He leaned down directly over the fence post to very carefully place the ball. And by the time I looked over and saw him doing that, it was too late. My to entire weight came down and the fence post smacked him right wow. in the face. Well, I'm dead. I bequeath everything to my Teddy Ruxpin. David rightfully screamed at the top of his lungs and ran inside to mom and dad, Aww. who were not happy at all. David's whole face swelled up and there was a puncture wound on his cheek that was oh. maybe an inch away from his eye. Oh he still has my a scar gosh. There to this day. I got in a lot of trouble and my parents yelled at me that I could have blinded him. Even though it was an accident, he wasn't supposed to put his face in Nah, out. nah, nah, you ain't getting out of this one. Rebecca. Kids and planks of wood are a recipe for disaster. Kids and makeshift seesaws are a recipe for disaster. You should have known better. It was an accident. Well, you know what? So was I. But I felt really bad to the point where I still felt bad years later into adulthood when someone would bring up this story. But now I've animated it and shown it to a million people. So it holds no more power over me anymore. Animation, Good. my antidepressant. So yeah, backyards, imagination, magic, wonder, childhood trauma, you get the idea. But seriously guys, go spend some time outside, get some sunshine and fresh air, it builds character. It's also really good for your mental health. Heck so yeah. Don't worry, Rebecca, I already went on my walk. I got like 10,000 steps in today. I'm allowed to just chill and watch YouTube now for the rest of the evening, as long as I get some work done. Oh wait, here I am. Let's go. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is fun. We are gonna hit one more short one, okay? Because we have to get through the essential viewing. And by the way, I'm gonna say it right now. I'm gonna put the link at the end of the video. It's also in the description. You better check out Let Me Explain Studios if you like this video. They did all the hard work. I just said the dumb things. Make sure you show them your support. Okay, this one I think will actually be really good for multiple reasons. Stole mom's credit card to buy N64. Featuring something else YT. First of all, this is like my generation here. Except I think she's a little bit older, but N64 Nint Nintendo 64! That was my childhood console was the Nintendo. Well, I mean, and then the GameCube, but I did have a, you, you know what I'm saying. So not only is that awesome, but also there is another animation channel that you guys have been asking me to look at, and it is something else YT. And so if we watch this one and it's ill, then perhaps next Next time, we will check out something else, YT. And if you do want that, make sure you let me know in the comments. But for now, here's the final story. Three, two, uno, boom. The Game Grumps played a couple episodes of Pokemon Snap while I was making my last video, and that jostled a memory from my childhood. I played video games when I was a kid. Ha! <laughs> you and like 83 million millennials. I didn't ask for your input, Adam. And this is about to age me dramatically because my first game console was the Sega Genesis. Ah. Ooh. Granny, tell us the story of classic Sonic. You know, the good Sonic. Ah! I swear Adam, to God. get out of here! Okay, yo, same though. I really think my first memory of playing a video game was Sega Genesis Sonic 2. I was two years old. It had been out for a few years, okay? I was not alive when the Sega Genesis came out. Let's not get it twisted. Your boy's still in his 20s, okay? But yeah, that was my first con. Technically, technically. My first video game experience was on the Genesis. As I was saying, my first console was the Sega Genesis. And yes, that meant I didn't grow up on Mario, I grew up <sighs> on Sonic. My childhood in gaming was popping a game cartridge in and hearing that iconic Sega. 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 All the other kids on the street were like, Wait a minute! I'm getting ahead of myself.
myself. Yes. Nintendo didn't take over my life until middle school. My siblings and I grew up on Sega. We even had that notoriously oh, Lion difficult King. Lion King Sega game. We didn't beat Crazy. it when we were kids, but in adulthood, my sister and I dusted off the cartridge one night and finally it's finished hard. the game. It is Without hard. that famous cheat code, thank you very much. Get a ladder, kids. You ain't even close to our level. Oh, <laughs> snap. Pokemon snap. Speaking of that, in the sixth grade, I got really into Pokemon. For my birthday, my parents got me a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Red and Blue. I remember being so obsessed with that game that I would put it away before bed, go to sleep, and oh, dream man. that I woke yeah, up in the middle yeah, of the night yeah, and continue yeah. playing it. <laughs> and when I actually woke up and started playing it, I would wonder why I wasn't further along. <laughs> Where the heck is my Dragonite? So yeah, Pokemon was a really big deal for me. And That's real. when Nintendo announced that they were releasing the first Pokemon game for the N64, Pokemon Snap, you know this little weeb was all over that. I went to my mom and very casually asked if she could order me Pokemon Snap. Me Pokemon. I also didn't have an N64, so I was gonna need one of those too. And Mama, being the kind and doting mother that she is, no, said, no. All right, fine. Oh. I was ecstatic! Oh, you don't have the N64! <laughs> Okay, the Pokemon obsession as a child, real, real. Hello everyone, my name is Robert IDK and I like Pokemon a lot. Oh my gosh, that ain't the same dude. You ain't telling me that's the same dude. You ain't telling me that's me. Nah, nah, this can't be. It must be a setup. There was, however, a slight problem and some of you may even be too young to know what I'm talking about. But back in my day, we had this thing called dial-up. To put it bluntly, uh, dial-up internet was slow. With a capital S, websites would randomly stop working. You couldn't use your landline yep, phone while someone was yep. online. And this. If you watch my videos, you know that sound. Ah, the sweet sounds of childhood. So my mom got on our family computer and went to ToysRUs.com. R.I.P. Wow. Jeffrey. She tried ordering the N64 wow. and Pokemon Snap, but because the internet was terrible back then, the website wasn't working and she couldn't get through. And back then, there wasn't much you could do about that except try again later. So she put away her credit card in the desk drawer and said that uh, she would try again tomorrow. But my little no, child you, I need it now. none of that. Nuh uh The universe was out of order until I had my Pokemon Snap and N64 in hand. Dude, it's still at that point in time, unless you're like ordering it directly from a local store, it's still Still gonna take like two weeks to show up, even when you order it. My parents were terrified of ordering anything online. It's crazy how commonplace ordering stuff online is at this point in time. Because yeah, uh, my parents, yeah, we'd never order anything online. And the N64 and Pokemon Snap, that's like 1999. They were ordering stuff online in 1999? That's ahead of my time team, timey time. What? Wrongs must be righted. About an hour later, I went back to the computer when no one was around. I got online and found Pokemon oh Snap boy. and the N64. Actually, oh this is the boy. first time I ever ordered anything off the internet by myself, so good job me for figuring it out. I was about to check out when I realized I'd forgotten a minor technicality. Things cost money. Ah, <laughs> right. Economics. Where am I gonna get money? Hmm. And then I remembered something special had been left in the desk drawer. <gasps> Mom's credit Money. card. You would think that a child would be more hesitant about using their parent's credit card without their permission. <laughs> you know, maybe give it a second thought or work up a sweat at least. Yeah, that would but terrify me. Nope. I was so laser focused on Pokemon that I didn't think twice about it. It's for the greater good. What a jolly little thief I was. I would never, that would terrify me. The yelling at I would endure if I pulled something like that. Even if my parents were going to get me something, just me going on and using their card. Oh my gosh, I would be in trouble. Huge trouble. Wait, you stole your mom's credit card to buy something she was already gonna buy for you? Yeah. Could you even really call that stealing? Listen, I was a good kid by this age. I followed the rules, I listened to my parents, so I was operating under the same logic. It's not stealing if she was gonna buy it anyways. To me, it felt more like problem solving. But no, go figure, using someone's credit card without their permission <laughs> under any circumstances is still considered stealing. And not to mention when I scroll down to select a shipping option. <gasps> Overnight delivery? Oh no! I can have this tomorrow? <laughs> Sign me! Uh, the internet is awesome, I wanna live there! And I went to bed, satisfied that I would soon be playing the greatest game ever created on the greatest console ever created. 
The next morning, I got up for school and mom met me in the kitchen. She told me that she would try again to get Pokemon Snap later that day. And me being as naive as I was. That's okay, mom. I already bought it. You hear that, boy? We didn't need to buy a hat. Oh boy, oh here it comes. Let's see what kind of mother she is. And me being as naive as I was said, uh, Don't worry mother, I got you covered. I already ordered it. You did what? Ordered it was really no problem, no need to thank me. How did you pay for it? Mm, you left your credit card in the desk. You ever get one of those looks from your parents where you instantly know you messed up? Yeah. Uh. It wouldn't get that far. It wouldn't get that far. The yelling would have already started. I can't imagine the stress, this feeling of staring into those cold, dark eyes, knowing that you messed up. Terrifying. Terrifying. Uh. Never touch my credit card okay. again. Yes, ma'am. The cherry on top of my transgression, later that same day, when my mom picked me up from school, you had it overnighted! I had to wait two weeks before I could play my new game. I ended up oh. waiting longer to play it than if I had just been patient from the get-go. Just goes to show, stealing is wrong. You had to wait to- that is an- A, that's an incredible pun- that's like literally the perfect punishment because it's like harmless but really just awful at the same time. You know what I mean? But man, I cannot imagine how painful those two weeks were. Those must have been the most painful two weeks ever. And I've never stolen anything since. Except for the hearts of millions. Well, except maybe a few hearts. <laughs> Did we just have the same joke, Rebecca? Did we just come up with the same joke? Did we just become best friends? Yup! Let me explain. Let me explain. You know what? You know what? I'm really happy for you, and I'm gonna let you explain. But Robert IDK had one of the best reaction videos, videos of, of all, all time. time! One of the best videos of all time! Another wonderful channel. I love these talented animators and storytellers. They are so wonderful. And I'm so glad that they are getting the level of success that they are. Let me explain. More like, let me point my audience to your channel. Yo, homies, this is Rebecca's channel. Make sure you're subscribed if you like this video. She did all the hard work. I'm just out here saying dumb stuff. Okay, sorry, I'll relax. And here's the last animation reaction we did. Check it out if you have not seen it. Or here's a video that YouTube thinks that you specifically will like. Are they right? You let me know. I'll see you here or I'll see you there. I love you. Thank you for watching my stuff. Peace.